geez, that's a hard voice to do. Welcome back. Let's just get right to it. The Naval Research Laboratory was actually the brainchild of Thomas Edison. In 1915, Edison suggested that the government should maintain a great research laboratory. This was to save expense and consolidate advancements in science to address concerns during World War I. The lab opened in 1923 and has been responsible for some of the biggest scientific achievements for almost 100 years. Thanks, Edison. Sure thing, Keith. Happy to help. NRL fits into the big picture of the Navy is we're looking at today's fight, tomorrow's fight, and the fight after tomorrow. Scientists come to NRL because they can come here and do something that's never been done before. And one of those areas is quantum information sciences. NRL has been involved with quantum science since its conception. But how did quantum science evolve into quantum computing? So quantum mechanics explains many phenomena that we see every day in our lives, but it also evolved into a proposition that, that one could actually um, use quantum mechanical systems for information. That leap in quantum information systems didn't happen until the 1980s, when there was a growing interest in computational power promised by quantum theory. There were a couple of algorithms developed, developed at that time which attracted people to the quantum computing problem. One is Shor's algorithm, which would potentially allow people to factor large numbers, which means that one could break almost any existing code. It immediately occurred to the military and the intelligence community that it could be used for deciphering encryption. And if you could develop a quantum computer that could do this process, you, in fact, could break the encryption standards uh, that have been developed uh, over some years to protect our information. A large amount of effort was put into developing the basis for quantum computing uh, because of Shor's algorithm and what it projected. Another algorithm is called Grover's algorithm. This is an algorithm for searching large data sets. Think about complicated battlefield environments, for example. So basically this, this business of quantum computing and related technologies started to use the ideas of superposition, that, that, that things could exist simultaneously in, in these complicated states, and entanglement. In 2020, the Naval Research Laboratory was designated the Navy's Quantum Information Research Center, which allows the laboratory to engage with the public and private sector organizations to enhance and accelerate research, development, and the deployment of quantum information sciences. Well, it's, very, it's a very important designation. Uh, it, first of all, it recognizes NRL's preeminence in this research field. It gives us the opportunity to have a window on the private sector, industry, and academia. And it also gives us the opportunity to uh, have them understand the research advances that we make in a collaborative, collegial manner. Okay, but why does the Navy and the United States need quantum technology in the first place? So we're currently in this state of great global competition. So our adversaries are investing a lot into quantum right now. Oh, well, that is a good reason. During World War II, when our workforce uh, grew exponentially, on our weekly newspaper they would put out, uh, it said, we will do the difficult today, but the impossible may take some time. But how much time? Such is the impossible question. We grow closer to the answer every day. Join us next time as we tour the labs and meet with more of the scientists doing this amazing work in quantum information research to make the impossible possible.